Hey guys, so today I've got another project to show you. Hopefully this will be a very quick one. It's about receiving atomic time. I know that sounds awesome, but actually it's the MSF time signal. Uh, it's broadcast from Anthorn in Cumbria, um, and it's a radio signal, and it uses uh, one of these little modules, just there, let's go for there, uh, and it uses an interrupt pin on the Arduino. Um, I'm using a bit of software. I'll put a uh, a link in the description of where you can pick up that software. I've modified it a hell of a lot so that I can put it on my little display and everything, but uh, generally uh, all the code is the same. It's just a radio receiver, it works at 60 kilohertz and it receives uh, signals from the antenna. It then goes into the interrupt on the Arduino and it measures the, uh, the high and low signals that come out of it. And uh, there's a whole bunch of information you can find on the NPL website, they're the people that broadcast the signal, to tell you how to decode that. But because I'm not massively technical, uh, I'm just using someone else's library. But I do understand the concept of how it works. So you, you have all these zeros and ones coming in your binary data, uh, and it's measuring the time in between those uh, signals and when they change. Uh, so it's saying when the minute starts. So you look for this series of uh, four ones and four zeros, I believe it is. Um, and that's when you find out where the minute starts and then you start recording your binary data coming in. And that will give you the, the time, the date, and, uh, and also the uh, leap seconds and summertime changes and stuff like that. So here it is. It's quite simple. I've just hooked up an LCD display and with that I've got a little green blob that you can see on the screen and that tells me that it was recently synced in the last 10 minutes. Now, if it doesn't have a signal, or it hasn't been synced in the last 10, minute, 10 minutes, the little blob goes yellow, and then if it fails to sync again in the next 10 minutes, it goes red, so that I know the time is out of sync, potentially. Now, the Arduino is keeping time while it's, uh, while it's syncing, so every 1,000 milliseconds, it is adding on uh, another second. Now, because that will eventually creep out of time, um, it uses the sync time, to, uh, to catch up. Now you can add an RTC onto there which is, would be a really good idea so that when it's switched off it's keeping that time and then you can resync it once it's switched back on. Now that would be great for things like solar power projects potentially or anywhere where you're likely to run out of battery power or something like that. It only uses uh, four pins but actually you only need the one to signal the Arduino so uh, you've got three of them that are connected to, uh, sorry, you've got two of them connected to ground got one connected to 5 volts or 3.3 volts it's a less noisy line so it's a good one to use and then you've got your signal out pin that goes directly to your interrupt pin now on the Uno and the Mega you can use 2 and 3 but there'll be other uh, boards that have more interrupts or they're on different pins so you just need to look that up the library that I'm including in the description has it hard-coded uh, to 2 or 3 um, with the UNO in mind, but you can just change that. It's not really a problem. You just need to go into the, the file and, and change that out. I got it from PV Electronics. I'll put the link down there. Um, it was about 10 pounds delivered. It's a really nice little thing. It's, uh, it's interesting. I didn't even know you could get that kind of time signal and decode it yourself. So it's, uh, it's worth a look.